Okay, so the idea of the Moore's Best Width search is you're just going to end up giving every level a length of one. So as you reach, as you go from U to the first set of vertex that you activate after U, that would be length one. So that would be, you know, a level essentially, and that would be one. And then you go from those active vertexes to the next one, and that's going to be level two. But that's essentially going to give us paths of length two. So that's the idea behind it. So let me just write that down. So the idea is you activate U as your initial vertex, in other words, your root vertex, and you give this a level zero, or you know, you give it a zero essentially, a length zero, and then. If, as you perform the breadth first search, as you perform the breadth first search, every level adds a length one essentially to it. And so you're leveling up as you go. So you have the initial vertex, it's length zero, it's a level zero, then you have your next um, level. That's one length one. And then you keep on going until you hit whichever vertex you're looking for, the vertex B in that situation. Um, so let's do the process. So we notice by now all algorithm, algorithms have very specific process. So yeah, you select your first vertex. So if you're looking for D, U, V, you activate U. If you're looking for D, X, Y, you activate X. And then you give it a length of zero. You activate it. And you give it a length zero. Then you look for all the vertex vertices adjacent to it. Adjacent, which aren't activated yet to the activated vertex, again, which aren't activated yet, just be remember that, and you activate all of them that haven't been activated before, which have not been activated before. And you give them a length of plus one. So if you started at length zero, the ease one's level will be one. If the, you had looked at vertices that were at level one, then this next level will be level two kind of a thing. So you give a length of plus one. And then you're going to continue until no more vertices can be activated. OK, so let's hold here for a second because here I speak about the fact you continue until normal vertices can be activated. So in this case, you're actually just performing the breadth first search essentially on your entire graph and giving levels as you, as you process. And then you're going to have lengths of the paths from you. So you'll have all the shortest path lengths from you to whichever other vertice. Obviously, if you're looking just for the shortest path of U to V, you could pretty much stop at V. You didn't have to continue. So there's just one thing to take note of in that. We'll look at it, you know, when we do the examples. So one other thing to notice or note, and I have added this to the notes in that, is I discussed the fact that technically it was first discovered by Moore when he was looking through mazes and stuff, but it was also independently discovered a few years later by uh, Lee. And one other thing to note is that it was technically available in work even before Moore when they were looking at maze researches and stuff. So the whole idea behind it was it was an incorporation of quite a lot of different mathematicians and stuff. And if you are interested in actually finding the details, I have linked you to at least two of the journal papers where this method is discussed and brought into play into the academic environment. So if you're interested in actually looking at journal articles and starting your post, your um, your search into you know scientific journals and stuff like that by all means go look them up and it's just an idea to actually show you the that it's not necessarily always going to come from one person technically someone did it before more but more did a paper that was pretty clear and lead it independently but in the end it got more's name so that's just like a 
side note situation. So let's go to an example. Okay, I'm going to create a graph that is not like the one in your notes so that you have different things to contrast with. So let's just go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. I'm just going to throw in some edges here. Okay, so there we have a graph. And let's look for the distance from D to I. Now, just looking at it as is, you should be able to see that the shortest distance from D to I should be 2. But we're going to go through the entire process. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate D. So we've activated D. Now we look at with the breadth first search, we look at all the adjacent vertices which haven't been activated before. So in that case, it's C, E, and G. Remember we do this in alphabetical order. So when we do this, it's C, E, and G. Okay, so when we speak about the whole levels and stuff, we say that this is length zero. So in other words, to go from D to D, you don't really have to move. So it is a length zero. Now, you're going to have this next level, a length 1. And remember, when you do this, this is technically the graph that you're forming here, right? So to go from D to C, it's length 1. From D to E, it's length 1. From D to G, it's length 1. So that's where that whole, you have your lengths and your levels are going to correspond because you don't have any weights currently. So just to go from one to the other, it is just the situation of length one. And I'm just going to do that so we can see how it matches between the two of them. Okay, so next up, you take all of those on level one and you look at their adjacent vertices and you activate their adjacent vertices. But again, you do it in alphabetical order. So when you look at this, you have C. C has an adjacent vertices vertice B, which is not um, activated yet. So we have that. Then we look at E. E activates F. Then we have G, and G activates H and I. Okay, H and I. And let's just add this so that we can see what's happening here. And all of this is level 2. So what you can see here is from going from D to I, you have the shortest path length of 2. So you already have the answer, D to I. So you could stop at this point because you already have your answer. But we're going to continue because the Moore's breadth first search will give you for every single vertice C, you know, where D is the beginning point. So when D is the initial vertex, it's going to give you the shortest paths for all of D. And I'm going to do this because we're going to need it for another term that we're going to bring up, another definition. So we're going to continue, and we now go to B, and we look at all its adjacent vertices. And let's get a color that we haven't used before. And we activate them. So B goes to A. And at this moment, we are done. And that is level 3. So we have the answer of D, D, I. But technically, yeah, we also have the answer for the distance, the shortest path distance from D to C, from D to F, from D to A, and so on. And this brings up a very important concept and referred to as the eccentricity. So the eccentricity is the longest shortest path from a vertex. In other words, so here you have here, you have the full structure of all the shortest paths from D to every other vertice in the graph. Now, the eccentricity is going to be basically the longest distance. So if you're starting at D, what is the longest distance from the shortest path map, which is the tree that we just drew, drew here, to get to the other vertices? In other words, the longest of the shortest. So in this case, it would be 3. So the eccentricity of D is going to be 3. So we refer to this as E, in eccentricity. 
of D in this case is 3. And it is looking at all the shortest paths from D to every other vertice in the graph and taking the longest one. So it's showing you, if you start at D, what is the quickest way you can get to every other vertice? And you'd be like, oh, but I can get quicker to C. Yes, you can. But overall, the boundary situation, to get to every other vertice, you should have to travel a distance of at least, well, of at most three. So the eccentricity, again, is the longest, shortest path. So let's quickly just write that down before we move on. So let's do it before we even do another example. Let's just write down the definition of eccentricity now. So the eccentricity, which we talk about like E, U, we let U, the element of the vertice set of the graph G, then the eccentricity of U is equal to the maximum of the shortest path. where V is an element of the edge set as well. So V stands in for pretty much all the other ones of them. And this is called the eccentricity of vertex U. So again, it's the longest, shortest path, and you can find it by doing Moore's breadth first search and just finding the you know final distance or the final level. So let's do another example. Okay, so we're going to do another example. So let's just draw a graph here. You don't really care that much what it looks like. Okay. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And let's ask... In this time, this time around, we're going to say, okay, what is the eccentricity of H? So E, H. To do this, we're going to do Moore's breadth first search with the initial vertex being H. So we begin by activating H. So we have H chilling over there, and it has, you know, a length of zero at the moment. It's on level zero, it's a length zero as well. Then we look at all the vertices adjacent to H and activate them, which haven't been activated before. So we go from H to D. And we give that a length of 1. And it kind of makes sense. You traveled one edge. Okay, so we have that so far. Now we look at D and we activate all the adjacent vertices from D. Because remember, this is basically the breadth first search. So C and E. E and E, and we have a length of 2. And again, you can see you've traveled two edges to go from H to C, or two edges to travel from H to E. Then we go again with the process, and again, alphabetical order, so we start at C, we look at its adjacent vertices, and for C, we only have B. So we have B chilling over there now. Now we look at E and look at its adjacent vertices. So E is adjacent to F. And we have length 3. And that, again, if you travel from H to B, it's 1, 2, 3 edges. And if you travel from H to F, it's again 1, 2, 3 edges. So we can continue our breadth first search. And that's our Moore's breadth first search because we have just, we're just given levels now and we're assigning levels or length to everything. So we continue on and we start with B and the adjacent vertice to B is A and it's G. And then we happen to be done because we've hit all the vertices in our graph. So we have A and G and let's just finish drawing this. And this is length 4 or level 4. And again, if you go from H to A, you would have to travel a minimum of four vertices, four edges to get there. So let's just again explain that whole process. Here you go from H, you go one, two, three, 
four to get to A. So one, two, three, four. And that's where you can get it straight from your Moore's Breath First Search and these levels over here because you can see it's in level four. So you had to travel a minimum of four edges to get to A. And because you're doing the Breath First Search and the Breath First Search gives you the shortest path, it is saying that when you look at the eccentricity of H, the eccentricity of H is going to be 4 because that is the longest distance to get to any other vertices in the graph from H looking at their shortest path. So it's the longest, shortest path. Some of the other things I could ask you straight from here or you could get straight from here is you can get all the different distances. So you could get D h to d that's one you get a shortest distance from h to c that's two you can get the shortest distance from h to b that is three and you can get for every single vertice and again your eccentricity is the longest of the shortest path 